Hello friends, welcome to this new video lecture in the course Advanced Algorithms. In this particular video lecture, we are going to cover the topic Probabilistic Analysis and Randomized Algorithm. Now we are going to understand this concept with the help of a particular case that is the hiring problem. So let's get started. Now, what is a hiring problem? It's like I am having a company and I'm planning to hire an office assistant for my company. Now I contact an employment agency. The agency has a list of candidates that he plans to send to me for the hiring process. But the only constraint is that the agency will send one candidate every single day. Now, whenever a candidate comes to me, I interview him. Okay. Either I hire him or I keep the old person who is still working with me right now. So uh, the constraint is that that if the new person who comes uh, after interviewing, if that particular person is uh, better than the currently hired person, then I have to hire that person, right? So always we want the best person. Okay, always hire if interviewee is better than the current person. So let's understand the algorithm. So you can see hire assistant uh, when I'm passing n candidates and the best is initialized to zero at the start because I'm not having no uh, office staff right now as I start uh, if the first candidate who comes obviously he'll be better than uh, no staff. So I'm going to hire him but the next candidate who comes if he's better than the current one then I make him the new best candidate and I hire that candidate I and I have to let go of the old candidate. Now there's a cost associated of letting go of the old candidate hiring the new one, right? So there's a lot of things to be taken care of. So let's see how it works. So now what are the costs uh, associated to this problem? Now there are two types of basic costs. The first cost is the interviewing cost that is C of I. The second type of cost is the hiring cost that is C of H. Now we clearly can understand that interviewing is a light process. So obviously the cost associated with interviewing will be less but cost associated with hiring will be like uh, firing the old employee and uh, when we fire someone we have to see to it that we do all his uh, accounting we give him the salary uh, because we are the ones who are removing him and he's not uh, giving away his job and we have to obviously uh, train the new employee who comes so there's a lot of cost associated to it so now what is the total cost so the total cost would be uh, the number of candidates I interview that are n candidates because I'm going to interview all the candidates plus the number of candidates I hire multiplied the hiring cost. So you can see it is C of I into N plus C of H into M where M is what the number of hirings that I do. Okay. Number of people I finally hire. So uh, let's understand uh, what would be the best case and the worst case and the average case cost. So the best case would be the first person who comes he himself is the best candidate. So I just have to put up the hiring cost just for once and rest all the uh, candidates I'm going to just interview and I'm going to hire no one right now. What would be the worst case? Worst case would be like uh, every single new day. The candidate who comes for the interview is better than the currently hired candidate. So if that is the case. That means every single person I have to interview plus every single person I have to hire. So that is C of I into N plus C of H into N. Now what is average cost now obviously average cost depends on in which order the applicants come right so let's hope that they come in some random order so that is the assumption that we do now each permutation of the applicants is equally likely uh, what is this permutation let's understand in a uh, uh, detail so let's get started with probabilistic analysis now to use probabilistic analysis we need to understand the data Okay, and make certain assumptions about the distribution of inputs in the data. So what is this data? This is the list of candidates, right? And what is the distribution of inputs of the data inside the data? It is the sequence in which the candidates are going to come to me, right? So we need to proceed with analysis and computation of average case running time, but we also need to manage the cost of hiring. So the final goal is to maintain the cost of hiring to be average as possible. So let's start by giving certain priority or rank to the candidate. Now the thing is that um, to the candidate if we give a particular uh, priority or something then what we can do is like it's like providing an ID to the candidate. Then uh, the thing is we can even like uh, call them randomly on the basis of number that I have given such as I have given 1 to 10 and then I say let the fifth candidate come first or something like that. Okay. But the thing is in probabilistic analysis we work with assumptions. So we need to assume 
that candidates might appear in the random order, which will lead to uniform random permutation. Now, what is uniform random permutation? The thing is that uh, if we assume that the candidates are coming in a random order, then any particular sequence uh, in which they appear have like a equal probability of uh, coming up. So any sequence has an equal probability. So how many sequences we could have uh, if they are coming in random manner? So there are uh, n factorial permutations that we can have, right? So this is what we were talking about. This is n factorial permutation and each permutation have an equal probability to appear as a sequence for the interview. Now, so probabilistic analysis just works on the assumptions that the candidate appear in random order of the rank or priority. But what if they are not? So the problem starts here. Supposedly the employment agency, they want to make a lot of money. Supposedly that every person I hire, uh, they charge that particular candidate because uh, uh, they have to pay something to the employment agency as they are getting hired from that entire employment agency. So obviously the employment agency is uh, planning to make profits. So that's why he sends me every uh, a better candidate every new day. So uh, the thing is we can't proceed that way. So, uh, the assumptions won't work for us. So then we take the help of randomized algorithms. So what we do is like we can proceed with randomized algorithms to bring about more control on the distribution of inputs inside the data. So what are randomized algorithms? Now uh, we clearly know that. Uh, when we were assuming the things to be random, okay, that was the average case analysis. And obviously in average case analysis, we work with a probability. Uh, probability that the inputs uh, or the sequence has an equally likelihood of uh, coming up. Now, in actuality, some inputs might be much more likely. That means if we are really unlucky, the most likely inputs can be the most costly one. So what can we do? So using random mesh algorithm, we can force all the inputs to be equally likely. How can we do that? By randomizing the input. So in that case, what we could do is like we can use uh, some particular awesome random number generator. Okay, so we can work out that thing and we can bring about the randomness. So in hiring assistant problem, we can first randomly permute the list of candidates and then run the algorithm. Then for any input, we can guarantee that the expected number of hires would be natural log of n plus big of one so we'll prove this thing in the later section of the video let's see how it goes but how can we randomly permit a list so that every permutation is equally as likely so to do that we are ensuring that we are using a good random number generator right so to shuffle the list but as soon as we shuffle the ribs list and the input is randomized we refer the running time of the entire algorithm as an expected running time because now we have randomized and we have no clue how it's going to work so we don't know the actual running time so we call it as a expected running time now so let's get started on understanding how we are going to solve this entire thing of expectation and expected running time with the help of indicator random variable now uh, indicator random variable is a method to convert uh, the probabilities and expectations so we saw that we were working with probabilistic analysis and suddenly we used the randomized algorithm uh, to bring about uh, randomness in the input so that we are not fooled by the employment agency and now we have something called something called as running time which is an expected running time so we need to have a relation between the probabilities and the expectation so let's see how it works now indicator random variable let's say is associated with particular event a so when that event A occurs, you can see I of A is equal to 1 if event A occurs. And if it is 0 if A event A does not occur. So let's say I'm talking about an example of a coin flip. So in uh, if you're flipping a coin, okay, now Y is a random variable. Okay, so that is an indicator random variable representing the coin flip. And let's say that I'm expecting uh, heads. So uh, if uh, indicator random variable Y uh, and I'm talking about getting a head. Uh, so if I get a head, that means it will be one. That means the event has occurred. The event of uh, coin toss when I get heads. And if I uh, toss the coin and if I get tails, obviously the indicator and a variable uh, uh, for that event will be giving me a zero value. Now, so what is expected value or that uh, E of a random variable? So it's uh, the value you expect the random variable to have. So uh, how can we compute it? Uh, can we say that it's a average mean value of the variables 
over many trials let's see so and uh, can we also say that it does not have to be equal uh, to the value of any particular trial so we'll get all the answers uh, slowly so let's get started now uh, expected value e of a random variable is what so uh, expected uh, expectation of a uh, event x we'll see that it is summation of all the values of x for that event x so this event x is suppose coin toss and we are talking about value x that is heads so we can say uh, heads multiplied by probability of getting heads something like that okay so when we want the average case running time of an algorithm we want the expected value of the running time so let's see uh, the event uh, x of h equal to indicator random value variable y equal to h so when we are finding out the expectation how are we going to work out is e of uh, the indicator random variable y so now we clearly know that it is 1 into probability of y equal to h plus 0 into probability of y equal to tail this is what we had got from here right that an expectation uh, is the dependent on the event right and the event you can clearly see the indicator random variable gives me 1 if y equal to heads and 0 if it is equal to tail so similarly we can see if it is head i am using the probability of half right and i am multiplying it with 1 because that is the indicator random variable giving me right plus 0 for tails multiplied by probability of tails so finally i am not going to have any right hand side and this is the only thing left so we can now say that expectation of an event uh, is equal to probability of that event happening right so can we just generalize the equation so for any event a happening indicator random variable xa is equal to indicator random variable of a into expectation of that event happening which is equal to what probability of a why because we'll be doing 1 into probability of a plus 0 into probability of not a so what do we get is finally the probability of a so that is it now we clearly know what is the relation between the expectation and reality so the expectation of an event happening is directly equivalent to probability of that event happening so indicator random variables let's uh, work it out for the to coin toss example so we can say that we are tossing the coins for multiple and we are doing multiple trials of it so what are the expected number of heads in n coin flips so let x be the number of heads in n flips okay so we are doing n flips in which x is the number of times the head has come up and xi with the indicator variable which talks about one particular flip so that uh, let it be the ith flip okay and it talks about uh, if we are getting heads in that ith flip right so now uh, e of x would be what uh, expectation of summation of all the pointers that we do that is xi uh, finally we take the summation out and it is uh, expectation of xi finally we know that expectation of xi is what probability of xi which is going to be half so when we do this it comes out to be n by 2 now uh, similarly we can try indicator random variable for the hiring problem so we see that instead uh, of the number of times the coin was tossed uh, uh, sorry in number of times we got head and the coin toss it is number of candidates hired and what is xi whether the ith candidate was hired right so we have to check it for all the n candidates so how would we work it out it is e of x equal to e of summation of all the n candidates and whether the, what happened with that candidate whether he got hired and how did it work out so finally we'll be having a summation of 1 to n expectation of xi now so before we go and understand the working with respect to probability let's see whether if we work out with the normally book and paper method whether it's going to work out okay so let's do a sanity ch check of it so doing a few concrete example as sanity check is a good idea so now uh, when the first person comes the probability that the first candidate is the best so far is what it is one by one because he's been chosen out of one person so it is one by one so finally we get one but when the second person comes the second person will be judged with respect to his skills as with respect to the skills of the previous person right so now we can uh, if we say that we have a random number generator we can clearly see we can get them in a sequence of one two like there's the first candidate coming on first day second candidate coming on the second day or we can get the sequence as second candidate coming on the first day and first candidate coming on the second day but finally if we want the second candidate to succeed right so which particular combination will be effective for us one comma two right because that's when he comes on the second day 
right so we can clearly see that uh, this particular combination the first combination is uh, actually going to help us to get the second candidate uh, to be hired right to be the best candidate so this is one particular combination out of the two so it is one uh, out of the two permutation so in here also you can clearly see it is uh, one by two right uh, so you can clearly see for i equal to two again uh, we are getting one by two uh, now for the third uh, if i equal to three that means the third day so for the third day also you can see the number of ways in which they can appear to me is like uh, one two three one three two 213, 231, 312, and 321. So six combinations or six permutations in which they can come to me. And if I want the third candidate to be the best, so in how many sequences do we find third candidate turning up on the third day? Okay, so we see it him in the first uh, permutation that is 1 to 3, and in the third permutation that is 213. So we see him coming on the third day twice. So it is two times out of the six permutation. So finally, uh, third candidate is a best candidate if uh, only in the two permutations. So that is two by six. So again, it is one by three. So you can see in the first one, it was one by one. In the second one, it was two out of uh, uh, one combination out of two. It was one by two. And the third one, it is two by six, which is equivalent to one by three. So where does it lead us to? So let's see. Uh, so what is e of xi finally we are calculating what e of xi so what is e of xi e of xi is the probability that the ith candidate is higher so ith candidate is higher when he or she is better than the i minus one candidates that came before right so assuming that all the permutations of the candidates are equally likely as we as use the random number generator what is the probability that the ith candidate is the best candidate right so that would be what one by i as we saw here also when we did the sanity check it was one by i so obviously any particular candidate getting hired what is the probability is that he has to be better than all the ones who came before him as well as like his skills will be evaluated against himself so finally it is like one by i so uh, let's now put up the probability e of xi would be what uh, e of xi will be replaced by one by i and uh, one by i could be written as natural log of n plus big of one so how does this come out it is like for positive integers uh, using the nth harmonic series so it is one by one plus one by two plus one by three when we do that it is uh, denoted as natural log of n plus big of one uh, that could be uh, equivalent to like uh, big of log of n okay so instead of natural log uh, we can use uh, log of n to the base two okay so that's how we understand the hiring problem and this was how we use the indicator random variable to solve our problem now uh, these are the references that I have taken uh, now uh, we need to understand the flow so how did we proceed in this entire uh, video lecture is that we started with the hiring problem then we use the probabilistic analysis in which we said that there is certain assumptions with respect to the inputs and we assume the inputs to be random uh, to get the average case analysis uh, but the thing is that we can't be very sure about the randomness so we decided let's use something to make the entire thing random so we use the random number generator that's where in the randomized algorithm came into picture but as soon as randomized algorithm came into picture we clearly say that the running time is not that the it's not the actual running time but it is expected running time and to solve the expected running time uh, to understand this concept of uh, expectation and the relation between expectation and probability we use the indicator random variable now the indicator random variable led us to understand that the probability of a particular person getting hired was one by i so we just uh, did the summation of uh, of all the n people by one by n and finally we have a uh, natural log of n plus big of one candidates getting hired so this would be the hiring cost okay so that's it i hope you have understood the lecture uh kindly if you have understood it uh like share and subscribe this video thank you thank you so much uh happy learning enjoy advanced algorithms thank you